Hey, Evangelia. Hey, Tony. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too, as always. How are you? I'm good. I am in Athens right now. Um, Very jealous. Yeah, enjoying a relatively nice winter, actually. Yeah. That's weather wise, it's been a yeah, great winter for other reasons, but yeah. weather wise, I've been enjoying how mild it is so far. Yeah, it feels like from everything that from when I left in November to what everyone says, it, it hasn't really gotten cold. So I guess uh, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Summer will come quick. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, let's jump right into it. Um, obviously, you've been on the show before, but I've been meaning to catch up with you for some time now because a lot has changed since our last one. Uh, mm-hmm. And we'll get into that. But let's let's just start off really quickly. Introduce yourself to those who may have never heard of uh, this podcast and or didn't listen to your previous episode. All right. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Evangelia or Evangelia, if you're Greek, Greek. And I was born in New Jersey and grew up going to Crete, um, the island of Crete, every summer and spending time with my family there. My dad's from Crete. My mom is Italian-American. So I'm this like mix. And um, long story short, always loved music, always wanted to go for it. But then, um, you know, reality sets in and you're like, I should probably go to college and also have another plan. And, um, the only other thing I could see myself doing besides music truly, and I really, really loved it was, um, being a teacher. And so I went to Rutgers university and I started doing open mics at that time. And, um, and I got my master's in elementary special ed and I became a teacher. And while I was teaching by day and really liked what I was doing by night, I was running around New York city, trying to get into, any music thing I could get into and um, really started living this double life. And after three years of living a double life, uh, the universe sent me a sign. At least I like to see it as a sign. Um, I was laid off due to budget cuts in the district, which is an unfortunate situation. But for me, it kind of turned out to my benefit because it gave me the push that I wanted and that I needed to really give my dreams a chance. And yeah, since then, I kind of haven't, um, haven't looked back uh, and regretted my decision. And now I've been making music and my music is a blend of traditional Greek elements and American pop music. And I just, I kind of been saying it recently in some other interviews that I've done. I'm like, you know, my music's half and half, just like me, you know? (laughs) Um, so it's been really, really fun bringing my Greek culture into my music and finding new ways of incorporating it, whether that's, you know, in the actual track or singing in Greek or the type of dance and movements that I incorporate, the type of visuals. Like, I love just getting creative and finding a blend. And it's been quite a journey so far. So that's kind of the long story short. I don't know if that was a long story long, but. No, that, was per- that was perfectly said um <laughs> so this past year obviously a lot has been happening and i t- had to take a look back at when we did our last episode and it was when did we last do it so it was recorded in october of 21 and i aired it november of 2021 maybe like a week later so late october early november and from the moment i posted the when i posted that uh a lot changed yeah. Talk to me about that. It feels like episode went up and then a week later I hear you're posting stuff with Ferreira, doing these all these amazing yeah. things and then things just took off. Talk to me a little bit about that. Wow, that's crazy that that's yeah, so that was before the duet with Ferreira. So I wrote this song Fotia um and it had English lyrics with one Greek line that says Fotia me samatia sou and um Eleni Ferreira took notice and heard the song. And when I was in Greece for the first time after the pandemic, we met up um, and she told me that she loved the song and that she found it on YouTube and was like, who is this person? And she just said the most kind things you would ever want to hear from a person, let alone somebody who you look up to, um, especially as an artist. And she just, really believed in me and what I'm doing and she loved the song and wanted to put out a Greek duet of it with me and I was like oh my god that's 
crazy. Let's definitely do that. Yeah. Um, and I was felt so honored and so excited. And so then I translated the song into Greek and we got her on it. And then we released it in December of 2021. And we premiered it at the Mad Walk um, and we opened the show. Um, which was my first televised like live performance essentially. And it was full choreography and just something I never done before. Um, and I was so grateful to work with her and learn from her. And I think it's pretty rare for an artist at my level, you know, at my beginning, I was definitely like a beginner artist to get to work side by side with somebody like her, who's a seasoned veteran, who was, you know, like the queen of Europe, got second place in Eurovision, might as well have won the whole thing. Um, right. So it was an amazing experience. And I'm so grateful for her. Um, and since then, the song's been top five at radio for in Greece for the whole year, basically. Um, and it changed a lot. And it was just really cool to, you know, have, have friends that were going into Athens or in Greece on the islands for vacation in the summer and sending me videos like, hey, your song is playing. And yeah. I heard that my happened song on the radio. once I got off the airport that we got in the car and your song was playing. I'm like, all right, she definitely made it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And I, I heard it for the first time on the like my own music for the first time on the radio this year. And it was so cool because it was a moment where. I was getting into a taxi to go to X Factor because this girl had chosen to sing my song Fotia, the mm -hmm. actually the original English version. And I get into the taxi and I hear Fot like I hear it and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? Like got like a <laughs> like a puppy or like a child in the candy store and he put it louder and I caught it on film and I like recently looked back on that video and I was like oh my god I'm so googly eyed and the truth is like I I have only caught it like a few times since then and I still get very googly eyed, googly eyed and excited about it and I think I always will um but yeah and then I released some of my own singles and then I definitely did not expect to be um living in Athens this winter but it's been such a cool experience um that's amazing yeah uh talk to me what was it like working with Eleni Ferreira it was awesome it was awesome she's such a pro and she's so good at what she does and she's a hard worker and she wants whatever she does to be the best it can possibly be and she doesn't settle and it was just really cool getting to be a fly on the wall um and also a partner with her. Cause I would, I would really observe and listen a lot and how she interacted with the people or when we were making the music video or when we were getting our show together for Mad Walk, like she's a force um, and, and she's amazing. And she's a friend and somebody who I can call, you know, if I have any, if I need anything, like she's very open and just a wonderful person. Yeah. That's amazing. So let's fast forward now to just a few months ago. Um, talk to me about what's going on. You're living in Greece, you're working at the yeah. Teatro. T yeah. Tell me what, what's that all about? You know, at the start of this year, uh, or at the start of 2022, I wasn't sure if I would, if that this would be the year I'd get to start performing live, to be honest. Um, so it's crazy looking back like a year ago today, I still didn't know if I'd be able to like put on a concert and for like, real people um and last year i got to do that for the first time with this music i did south by southwest who did the first you know new york shows did la um then you came you came to one of the shows right so the, the first one in one new I'm york the one yeah the yeah. one in new york and then i did manhattan and had my first like sold out experiences and i was so excited and then i did a show i did a concert in Palojora, which is my hometown in crete um, which was super special because my it, they set up a stage in the in the uh, back like yard of the school, the elementary school, because it's like the biggest space the town has, and it's the school my dad went to. So it was just a really sweet experience, and we had like a thousand, like 
1200 people came to the came to the show and it was what was nice about it was it was young folks and older folks too who knew my yaya and my grandmother from the area and saw the posters and were like we have to go see Eva Yelia from the village you know yeah. and all that is to say that while I was on my way to this concert finally like leading up one of these big moments for me in Greece I get the call from George Arsenakos um who's the one of the head he's the head at Panic Records um telling me about this idea and this offer to open for Costadinos Arguidos and Sakis Urvas at Teatro. For those listening, can you repeat the two na- names you just said? I know Costa- I already knew, so it's not as surprising, but come on now. <laughs> Costadinos Arguidos, yeah, Costadinos Arguidos, she's at the very top like, of the that's game. No, that's no slouch right there. These are no. two of the biggest names in Greece, if not yeah. the two and biggest Sa- names. Yes, and uh, Sakis Urvas, who's a legend, a living legend. Absolutely. Um, for and basically like yeah come to Greece for five months and do this in the winter and it was kind of shocking to me because I never really thought about it um and then the opportunity came and we thought about it and you know we did the pros and cons and it's really been wonderful um and really worked out because in the U.S. at least like the winter time is more hibernation time and not really you know huge concert right, time right. whereas in greece everybody's going to these Everybody, venues, yeah. these residencies and they're packed every it's like the high season a u.s high season is the low season here you know i mean greece greek high season is the low season in the u.s so it's been really cool being here and that it balances out in that way and works out that way for me so i can be here and not feel like i'm missing it out i'm actually gaining and i'm so grateful to have the opportunity and the experience to get to live here in the winter athens is an amazing alive beautiful city and with awesome people and i've been having a really really great time here that's amazing earlier i asked you what is it like working with eleni is it the same in this situation? Are you working with Saki and Constantino or is it a little different? It's a little different because with Eleni, it was a full-on collaboration and, um, you know, shared creative expression because it became then our song, the Greek version right. and the Spanish version. Um, in this case, they're still, um, you know, great people and I see them and we say hi. And especially when I was putting my show together, it was funny. They were it was Arguiros and Ruvas were just sitting on the couches like while I was on stage doing you know my rehearsal um I was like am I on the voice because they're they're also judges on the voice <laughs> yeah, they, was, they look like, like the is, judges lined up like this is so surreal I felt like I was like on the hot seat with them being like do we approve of this show to open for us is this good enough and luckily I got thumbs up for both of them um but yeah I felt like just so surreal seeing them up front just like sitting watching and analyzing um but they're both they're both great and me and um Arguidos kind of knew each other last year through Eleni and we're already kind of friends and I met Saikis now and he's great and um sometimes when I get off stage um because right when I get off they come on and so sometimes I see them in the hallway and I, <laughs> there's been like one time where Saikis was walking down the hallway and he was doing his like vocal warm ups to the melody of Fotia, like the Buzuki melody. And I was like, what is life <laughs> right now? <laughs> like that's so crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're great. And, it, and it, I do still learn a lot just being around them and seeing how they work and how they operate. And I go in and watch their performance and I always like analyze everything so I can learn from them. How has this residency changed you personally and how has it changed you feel in the eyes of the public in Greece? It's changed me um, personally in the sense that I feel very... I feel like I'm in um, boot camp and training for like, I feel like I'm in pop star training because it's a rare opportunity and the U S 
to get to have a residency where you perform in front of a crowd this big of a crowd it's like 1500 people sold out every weekend every friday and saturday night so i feel like i am getting the training and experience of a lifetime that i couldn't like i didn't study music in school i feel like i'm studying it now in performance in a way um and so i'm growing a lot there and i i have the show filmed and i watch it back every time and i try and like fix things or change things. Um, and I've also been growing a lot. I feel in my personal style and fashion world because I've taken the opportunity with these shows to have a new look every time I get on stage. And so I have a stylist and a makeup artist and it's been so much fun playing with that and just exploring what I like and having fun and being able to give people something also to look forward to of like, Hmm, what is Evangelia going to wear this Friday or this Saturday? And every time you come to see the show, um, cause there are a lot of people that come multiple times. Like you always get a, something a little, a little different each time. Cause depending on what I'm wearing, it brings out a different energy. So it's sure. been really fun ex exploring with, fashion and just performance in general and, and studying and growing and getting experience that's awesome it's gone noticed i'll tell you that i noticed yeah. the, the completely different looks on each uh, time <laughs> you're doing posts that's awesome yep. <laughs> thank you um how long does the residency go for so they said it's gonna go till end of march however i've heard rumors that they might try to make it run through april because it's doing so well so I might be here through April. That's amazing. Through Greek Easter. <laughs> yeah, Keep so. doing it. Keep doing yeah, it. What so is I'm just like living in Greece right now. <laughs> That's that is amazing. What is the one main thing you're enjoying about it? Um, definitely the performing. Just getting up there and, and singing and, and connecting with people is so much fun. And I and people ask me. Like, oh, doesn't it get tiring, like getting up there again or like, and it does sometimes. And like Friday will come around. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to, I can't believe it's already Friday and I have to do this whole show again. But then I'm getting ready and putting on the outfit and getting on stage and I'm just happy. And I really, really like it. And um, it's been great just meeting people and I think people here in Greece getting to see me I realize you asked the part of there was a part of your question before that I didn't really answer but I think it's helped give me some visit more visibility here in Greece and just um it's been fun it's amazing keep doing it um <laughs> what's the difference between living in Greece now you, you must start feeling like a local at this point to living <laughs> as a Greek in America yeah it's so Interesting. I'm really getting used to it. Um, it was nice because I was already coming back and forth a lot as as music was picking up here. So I already had like some friends to tap into and I've been making more friends and there's a lot of differences. I mean, one thing that's different is I walk outside and see the Acropolis. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> you know? But I just like nightlife in general. There's just always something going on here, like living in L.A., it's awesome, but you have to really make plans. You have to search to find things. You have to drive places. You, your friends don't always live as close. Like here, it's a city yeah. and I live in the center. So it's just, everything is so accessible and really beautiful and, and nice. And um, yeah, I, I, I really am enjoying Athens in the winter. Cause I had always experienced it in the summer where I didn't love it. Cause it was just hot and full of mm. tourists and no Greek mm. people were here. Cause we're all on the islands and I was like, Oh, yeah. I, ugh, Athens is terrible. And then I'm like, then I experienced a little taste last year in the winter when I came for Eleni, for the song with Eleni. And I was like, Athens is pretty cool. Yeah. Everybody's alive. Like yeah. this is the city that never sleeps. Every year that passes. I love the Athens more and more. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really great. It really is. Um, I know you kind of answered this earlier. I was going to ask now, aside from this residency, have you performed in Greece before? Was it just that time in Crete or was there other times? It was that time in Crete. And um, also I performed my first stadium with Eleni and she invited me up on stage at her concert and we sang Fotia together. 
And it was, yeah, it was in Larissa in June, I think. And it was one of the craziest experiencing like literally thousands of people like screaming my lyrics that I wrote was crazy. And then I'm like holding hands with Eleni Fureira and she's bringing me on stage. And, you know, she said such nice things before she brought me up. And um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Amazing. And then you said you're from Crete. Mm-hmm. That, that's what you call Crete. home in Greece. If you're not in yeah. Athens, you're in Crete. That's where we find you. Yeah. If I'm not in Athens, I'm in Crete. You know, I actually just got to go to Crete for the first time since I've been here last week. Cause I've just been so busy running around and getting into the swing of everything with this residence. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot of work, but it was so nice to go home and see my family and eat. For sure the best food ever like Athens has good food but I think Crete has like the best food in the world and For especially me, I think the best food in Greece are two places there's Crete and Naxos yeah. it always seems like these two places have just figured out food and not that saying everywhere else is not good no just, everywhere else just is, that everywhere old... else is amazing everywhere yeah, else it's is just, like it's just a little point. bit better it's just a little bit better in Crete yeah and there's Naxos. some yeah there's just something about it and um, yeah. so I got to go and like relax and I just what what well, part of Crete? Because obviously Crete's um, huge. Crete is like Crete's huge. all of I like the been, northern. I kind of am part of every. I my uh, I'm technically from. I am from Paliojora, which is on the Kanya side. So my dad was born and raised. Um, but I also spent a lot of time in Arjanes, which is near Iraklia, on the other side mm-hmm. of the island, because my aunt, his sister, um, married someone from Arjanes. So I always grew up splitting my time between the u.s and crete and also splitting my time between the diff- two sides of crete because yeah. my dad was in kenya and my aunt was in iraq so all my cousins were there so i went for like four days and i did arjanes iraq stopped in Eretino for a radio interview and then stopped in kenya went to paliohora drove back so i did a little Crete uh yeah. Crete tour I get that question a lot when people ask for travel advice. It's like, oh, I want to see Crete as much as possible and I have five days. I'm like, are you do you understand like Crete's not a typical size island? Yeah. It's Crete's like so- saying, I want to see the entire mainland of Greece in a week. Like you don't yeah. do that. Yeah, Break it down can. into like five islands and then yeah. and then attack it that way. But yeah, this summer we did when we went to Crete, we spent most of the time in Kanya. We did a couple of days in Rethimno and two days in Iraklium. Yeah. Crete's awesome. Kanya, so, Kanya wins, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not even close. Yeah, it's, it's not, not even close. Even, I know. Like Kanya, Kanya is just, I could live in. Myth. Kanya is one of like the three places I wrote down. If I was to live in Greece, it would be one of those three. Yeah, it would be Athens, Kanya, and Paros. Those three I can live. On. And lately, Santorini's kind of risen just because of the expat community that's on there. There's a there's a huge community in Santorini, which oh. I've gotten to to realize the last couple of years. Cool. So. So that's four. I'll give you four. Cool. So aside from Crete, you can't include Crete in this list. Three of your favorite islands aside from Crete. Mm, okay. Um, Sadorini. I think it's the most majestic, beautiful view I've ever seen in my life. And mm. I was always like mm, poo-pooing it. Like, ah. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I would always go to Crete and just be with my family and I'd feel guilty to go anywhere else. And I was like, Oh, all the tourists go to Southern. But then I went yeah. to Southern and I was like, I fully understand what the big deal is. Yeah. Southern is worth everything. It's no, it is. It is. It's so unique and so amazing. And so I love Southern. I really love Milos Island. It's so unique and really beautiful. And I've been there. I had to go back and we went once yeah. and, went, and went back again. And the other island, I really, I do like Naxos as well. My brother got married there. So I got to have like, so it has a little special place in my heart. Nice. Three good choices. How about mainland cities or villages? You know, not that I know much. I've really only spent time in Athens. My dad's trying to come up here now and we're going to start driving around and exploring some places during the week when I'm not working. But Athens, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, I love uh larissa not that i've experienced it but simply for the memories that they gave yeah, me at sure. that concert so larissa is, holds a special place in my heart and then i recently um went made a friend who has a home in porto Gelli, 
which mm-hmm. was really pretty. And so like that was a two hour drive. And that's kind of all I know. That might all be right. all I've been to on the panel. Still three good so. choices. Yeah. Good choices. Go. <laughs> yeah. Larissa, I've only yeah, I've only we've only stopped once for like coffee on the drive down. I haven't really spent time in Larissa, but Athens is dope. I went to Porto Kelly and stayed um at this pretty cool like hotel that and it was yacht week that week so like everyone it it was a yacht party at this hotel it was it was pretty cool um and then give me your three favorite greek dishes um are we talking savory or sweet or it's um yeah no, no no sweets no sweets okay uh and yemista, but my fear is yemista. Mm. Okay. Specifically. You, just made, you just made me hungry. Yeah, and, and, th- I, and that... say meat. I do eat meat too, but like I was just talking to somebody about this today. I'm like, there's so much more to Greek cuisine than meat. Like we yeah. eat so many different vegetables and it's so diverse and so good. For mm. sure. All right, and, th- <laughs> and, th- and three desserts. Lukmades. I'm obsessed. Pretty much anything with hun- honey and sesame. So lukmades. Um, I love bugatsa and xerotigana, which are Cretan specific. Okay, I don't really. think I've tried those, so I gotta try those. Oh, you're okay. gonna love them. All right, I'm gonna, I'll let so you know. Good. I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna good. go check if the Greek market down the street has some. Yeah, <laughs> all right, just a couple more questions and I'll and we'll wrap things up. Um, what inspires you every day? And who or what inspires your work ethic? Mm. That's a good question. I guess my partner, my life partner, he's my boyfriend. I don't know what to call him, but um, he's my person. And we do our, we make music, all of this music we do together. And I would say that he inspires me and we inspire each other. And we, um, inspire each other on this journey because everything we've built that I've built in this career we've built like as a partnership and together so all the music even like from managing me like we manage me together right now um so I would say that I think having somebody that is with me at my side both personally but also believes in my dreams and wants me to achieve everything I want to achieve is invaluable amazing if you could share one message to everyone listening what would that be um follow your dreams perfect (laughs) and then (laughs) one last question and this is the question that i ask everyone before we finish and what does it what let me ask that again what does being greek mean to you Mm. being greek to me means being proud of your roots and your heritage and your tradition. And it's something I can't put like, I, it's really, that's a hard question. Cause it's, it's almost like magic. I feel like there's this energy that Greek people, I, especially people born outside of Greece um, who feel this like need to hold on to to Greece and everything that that means. Um, I just feel so proud to be from here and I'm I'm proud of my family and our roots and our tradition and everything that comes comes with it. And it's hard to explain. It's like intangible. I don't know. Hmm. All right. And where can we find you? Where can we find your music library? And where can we find you online so that everyone can learn more about you? You can find me on Instagram at Evangelia, E-V-A-N-G-E-L-I-A. Um, and pretty much all the handles. If you search Evangelia, you'll find it. And yeah, follow me there and stay tuned. I'm getting ready to announce a little mini North American tour for the spring summer. You're from Boston, right? Correct. We're looking at putting in a Boston stop as well. That'd be perfect. We'll get the Boston crowd out. Exactly. So we want to get the Boston crowd out. So we'll be in touch about that. Um, Yeah. And I'm just, I'm 
really excited of everything that I'm doing here, but also excited about everything that's to come and, and in the works and lots of new music. So Amazing. can't wait. <laughs> We're excited. Can't looking forward to all this stuff. Thank you, Evangelia, for coming on. Thank you. Thank so you everyone amazing. for so listening fun. to Grease Chats. This has been Evangelia. You can find her on Instagram at, at Evangelia and performing every Friday and Saturday at Teatro Ooh. in Athens with Sakirubas and Constantinos Aguiros. It's so much fun. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And we'll talk to you again on the next episode. Thank you.